Hi, welcome to the Canterbury Museum in Christchurch, New Zealand. My name is Sebastian, I'm part of the exhibitions team here, and... I'm Neha, and I'm a conservation and collection specialist. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a conservator. Today we're going to present our paper, which is on You Can Stick It, um, and it's, we're going to talk about tips and tricks for using Lascaux 303 to temporarily adhere objects while on display. Have you ever needed to just stick an object in place? but be able to remove the adhesive later on? Our talk today will demonstrate creating and applying the dots used to form a temporary adhesive in direct contact with an object. Previously, Canterbury Museum used Roplex. However, since its discontinuation, we've been testing Lascaux 303 as a replacement. Its properties prior to drying are slightly different, so hopefully this talk will give you the options to make a perfect dot. Here in our gallery of European Decorative Arts, removable adhesives are used extensively to protect our treasures from damage. As they retain a slight jelly consistency, they are also very good at reducing vibration experienced by objects. When top-heavy objects are to be displayed on fabric bases and pinning is not possible, we use small acrylic bases to increase the footprint of the object. We use them extensively to hold glass, metal, including silver, and glazed ceramic objects. It adheres well to glass, acrylic, metal or painted shelves or surfaces. We also use it to secure mounts to shelves like acrylic plate stands or object lifts. One of the things our researchers have found it very useful for is temporarily fixing bones or other objects down to scanning plates for our 3D scanner. This is Lascaux 303 HV. It's used in conservation when an adhesive with permanent tackiness is required. When you start making your dots, you would either want to use a syringe without a needle attached or a bamboo skewer. It's also quite useful to create some dot templates to get a consistent size. We use non-stick baking paper as we find that the adhesive dries a lot quicker. So Lascaux is quite viscous, so it does have does tend to take a little bit of pressure to get it out of a syringe. But I'm just making the dots according to the template underneath. I'm trying to keep it within that dot. So another way of applying is with a bamboo skewer. You can use the pointy end or the blunt end. So to remove the peaks and to slightly flatten the dots, we apply a baking paper sheet over the top for them to try with. So after 24 hours of curing, the dot should be ready for use. You can peel the baking paper away to get access. The least contaminating method of application is to use the baking sheet itself to apply the dot to your object. To make this easier, you can cut up your sheets into more manageable sections. To apply the dot, just apply a little bit of pressure. Another method is to use the bamboo skewer to apply to the surface. So how do we know that Lascaux will be suitable for object restraint in an earthquake environment? One of the tests we do, which is very simple, is a tilt table test. So we take our object, we attach it to a table, and we lift it up until the object falls off. Preferably use a stunt object. So when placing your object onto display, Locate it where you want it, press it down, and give it a gentle twist to lock the adhesive down. If you have to pick it up, you will have to replace the adhesive, so try and get it right the first time. As a simple test for its earthquake effectiveness, we find that if it can support its own weight to 90 degrees, generally, it would support itself in an earthquake. So when it comes to removing the object, either you can gently twist to release the adhesive, or if you feel like that's not going to work, get some fine thread or nylon, and you can use it to slowly break the seal and release the object. So to remove it off any glass, metal, or glazed ceramic surface, it should just roll off and not leave any residue behind. Thus far we've tested removability up to six months, so it's definitely suitable for temporary exhibition display. Other testing is ongoing. 
Although tilt tables are an easily accessible test method, our results with creating a more real-life earthquake has given us greater insight into how the adhesive dots respond against other methods and materials, shown here shaken to 110% of New Zealand's building code. We are looking forward to extending this research with the University of Canterbury to provide more detailed recommendations of what is required for different sizes and weights. We are also exploring how the dots respond with age, as our results so far show that they are harder to remove after six months on display. We hope that has been helpful and informative for you. Thanks for watching. Why, thanks, guys. That was fantastic. Um, I bet we're going to have a lot of really good questions. Um, so um, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa Imamura, who is our Q&A um, master at this moment. All right. Can you hear me? Right, Laura, thank you. Um, just wanted to thank you for sharing this project. I think we all know how frustrating it is when things get discontinued. So I'm glad that you're uh, able to explore alternatives and, and having success at it. So um, go ahead and uh, launch into the Q&A here. Um, well, someone says, did you say they discontinued Roplex? Glad I bought two gallons. Um, <laughs> and, uh, when, when did that happen? Do you know? It's 2012, actually. Yeah. yeah. Also, right after the earthquake, basically. Yeah, yeah. 2012. So, I guess folks who have stocked up have a little bit of a reprieve. Um, okay, so the next question um, What is the longest you have left it on an object in your test? About six months. Yeah, it's six months. We've got some that managed, we've done to a year. Um, but those those aren't across the board. So we tested on a number of different substrates. Um, so we don't have a year's testing across the board, um, but for some items we have a year. Um, and depending on the different substrates, it does slightly change how it reacts. Mm. Got it. Um, next question, what is the, oops, sorry, I already got that one. Um, how well does it adhere to frosted type glass surfaces? Uh, very well. Uh, it seems to. Um, it, uh, the gel consistency of it really likes to key into um, both semi-porous, which is like frosted glass, and non-porous surfaces. So uh, thus far, um, yeah, it, it, it might, it, it seems to have a bit more of a problem than Roplex with um, very um, dusty surfaces. So some um, slightly friable earthenware or or terracotta um, if it's if it's got that slightly dusty feeling um, uh, you know, particularly on the base of a, of a room but otherwise it seems to be doing quite well. Yeah because it doesn't penetrate into the object um, the surface that it adheres to needs to not be friable or have any kind of loose material on it um, otherwise it would need to be pre-consolidated with something like paraloid first so you could use that if that was acceptable to the object in order to create that surface. But um, obviously, because it's not penetrating into the object, it's just sitting on it, um, it, it you know, it will just detach. If there's anything friable, that will come off of us. Great, so kind of related, um, we have a question about how Lascaux compares to um, like sticky wax or, you know, to, um, to earthquake wax, if you've tried that, um, particularly for porous materials. Yeah, so our test results, you saw some of the, um, the shape table testing. So our main bulk of the testing was related to comparing uh, the wax, which is sort of quake wax or museum wax. Um, there's a number of different titles for it, um, which is basically a microcrystalline based wax. Um, there are different types of waxes, so it's bit, you, you, you've got to be a bit careful about which type of wax it actually is. But um, well, our actual thing was to look about that and to look at whether how Roplex and Lascaux uh, related to the waxes and whether they were comparable across the board. Um, Lascaux actually compares really well um, to the, those microcrystal waxes. We found, um, uh, as I'm sure anyone who's used <laughs> museum wax, that it's really horrible to use because it basically 
it gets you know on everything um and it's you know really hard to find you know you make the balls and then you basically end up with a really sticky residue on absolutely everything that it touches um so one of our ways was to try and mitigate uh, and to look at that and to look at how they compare one thing to really note is that the wax is don't change that much over time, uh, whereas um, the adhesives probably will. Um, so that's part of our longitudinal testing, which is the future. Oh yeah, that's an important note there, yeah. Um, there is a question specifically about dental wax and if you have results with that or experience with that as compared to um, you know, uh, something that's marketed as a quake wax or a museum wax. Yeah, the dental wax is actually a different composition um, and you need to heat that um, in order to get it to adhere to your object. Um, so it's something that you're only going to try on something. Um, Tapapa did some great uh, studies on using it on um, some large Anne Robertson uh, glass pieces, uh, which are really stable, uh, really, you know, good substrate to deal with, no breaks, no, no things like that. So um, where you can heat your object, not very common, <laughs> um, but where you can do that, then it's certainly an option um, and the results are quite good. Um, but um, it's not something that we tested because for the majority of the pieces that we're dealing with, they're very delicate and they're also um, not gonna be able to be heated. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a question here. Do you have a chart of um, what other materials you've tested? Um, and uh, I guess, well, returning to the museum, the museum wax, I think we've kind of addressed that. But in terms of how you kept track of your results and where we might find them. <laughs> We're publishing here, yeah, so yes. Uh, so we are um, hoping to publish uh, this year. Um, well, hopefully in oh, yeah. AIC um, journal. So once we have submitted our paper, it should be available for everyone. But yes, we do have charts of all the materials that we've tested on and all the material uh, adhesives and things that we did test. And the different levels to which we tested, so the different, um, uh, the shake levels, so which ones would do better at lower shakes versus higher shakes and using, comparing and contrasting the different two methods. So the one where you tip it to 90 degrees or different degrees and then also putting on a shame table. So um, that will kind of come out in, uh, yeah, in the paper. Um, and so all that be a details. Um, but uh, we've had so many questions from people um, asking us, you know, how do you even apply this? Um, that we thought that it was quite useful to do something focused on applying it practical way. Very practical. I appreciate that. Yeah, it looks, um, you know, in comparison, like you were saying, to working with museum wax, it's like, oh, and then just put the paper down and peel it off. It looks amazing. So, although I'm sure it takes some practice. Um, we have a question here about um, what type of deck materials you tested it with. Will that be included in this fantastic chart? Uh, Yes, it will be. Um, so mainly we, the, the types of surfaces we do are um, fabric covered surfaces, painted MDF or other painted material surfaces, and glass or acrylic. Now, functionally glass and acrylic are effectively the same, so we just used acrylic. Um, so those are the main decking um, materials that we would have inside our display cases. Um, and, and yeah, so those, those are the ones we tested with. Great. There's a question here about um, how well it works with wood. And it sounds like if you've been using it on MDF, then it, it does work with wood. But I guess, I think this question might be about wood objects um, and if it's easily removed from wood. Yeah, and this is one of our particular concerns because um, obviously we have a number of tables within the museum where, um, and especially in a new exhibition that we're working on, where people want to put objects directly on the table as though you're laying up a beautiful table, National Trust style. And um, obviously for us here, you know, it, it's a big risk um, of earthquakes. So we can't obviously fix the table because the table is often a collection item itself um, and they're often varnished. Um, or French polished. So um, actually one of the really key things that we were looking at um, is whether we were getting 
any staining. And obviously, if anyone's used quake wax, you'll know that it completely stains horribly um, any surface that it that it touches. Um, so that really wasn't an option. Uh, we used it at the art gallery um, for an exhibition, a, a more modern table. Um, and that over quite a short display of three months, we didn't get any staining on the table. Um, but again, that's quite a just short display period. Um, so trying to do those longitudinal studies will help quite a lot with that. But I certainly think, you know, if your option is the object, you know, especially if you're talking about glass object, if the option is no securing here, that's just not an option. Um, so being able to actually use it on wood surfaces is certainly a lot more removable and a lot um, almost no staining that we could see on our one um, from using it on a polished surface but that's not to say that I wouldn't suggest that you would test it first um, because our, and especially over a longer period that may not be the case. All right there's a question here if you've experimented with adding water to thin the adhesive out um, to get thinner dots or less tacky dots um, you know how does it mix with with other things? We've mixed with the 498. Um, so actually we, we did create a number of different um, percentages with 360 and, uh, sorry, 303, which is the replacement for 360. Um, and then also uh, 498 um, and to give different levels of tack uh, because the 498 doesn't stay permanently tacky, but the two are able, you can mix the two to create different kinds of uh, variations in tack. We found that anything over 10% basically wasn't tacky enough. Um, it does make the dots uh, stronger. So it does act as a stronger adhesive, the more 498 that you put into it. Um, but actually for, for a lot of our tests, the, the basically the 303 was perfectly acceptable um, to a real earthquake scenario. Um, so actually the added issues of trying to you know, mix and making sure that your mix is a perfect mix sometimes is quite difficult um, and contamination from different surfaces. So we try to keep it sort of as simple as possible because our aim is that this is able to be used by a lot of small regional museums um, and by individuals. So it's quite, you know, it's more complex. They've got to get two materials and then they've got to mix them. We also found the colour change slightly, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so I think the higher the, the, higher the mix, the slightly more yellow it was. So. Yeah, a little yeah. Um, 303 is not perfectly clear. Ropelix was basically perfectly clear. Um, and and so it's subtly, subtly coloured. But we find that in the small quantities we're using it, uh, you saw some of the galleries there of glasses on glass shells, and you really don't notice the discoloration there. It's it's only when you get a large amount of it that, that you get a very slight, slight perceived yellow. So if you're making plate bases, so for like heavier, larger objects, sometimes what we do is we basically um, create a sort of a full base mount um, where it's quite a solid thing like a plate, something that's not broken before. So you can actually create a sort of full base mount. And in that case, actually diluting it will be better because Roplex flows really beautifully across the surface. Um, sometimes a bit too beautifully. Um, whereas the last guy will kind of more stay where you put it. Um, so actually having that float, um, so by diluting it, you will be able to get it to form more of a, a float. But we actually found that with the dots, the last guy works really well in terms of creating quite a nice, you want a little bit of a dot, a little bit of raisedness because you've got to be able to get underneath it. And also because you want that little bit of squish. So in an earthquake, it actually, does more than just acts as an adhesive, it actually sort of um, gives a bit of cushioning action as well. So that's really quite crucial to it. Um, so you, you do want a little bit of raisedness and actually putting the um, baking paper over the top just gives you that nice flat surface above and below. Gosh, that was wonderful, you guys. Thank you so much. I, I know there's more questions. So everybody, you know, please do come to that to the um, after party and the presenter's contact information is available to you, but that, that was just super cool. Thank you so much.